ever sit and wonder what Walt Disney would think of what's become of Disney? You ever just wonder that? Hello and welcome to Madison Rant's Disney. Da -da -da. I think a lot of people can say that they have grown up with Disney, that they're hardcore Disney fans, that they love Disney with everything in them. And I also think a lot of Disney fans can now say that they're not as hardcore as they used to be. I am one of them. In recent years, especially as I've gotten older, I've become less of a diehard Disney fan. And I've become a little bit more, I guess, cynical or jaded or whatever you want to say. But I'm not as big of a Disney fan as I used to be. And I want to go into some of those reasons why, personally for me, I'm not all about Disney anymore. When Disney went on its remake journey, if that's what you want to call it, a lot of classic Disney fans, I think, got very angry because Disney is messing with classics. They're messing with the stuff that really made Disney stand out, really made Disney what Disney is today. And when you mess with classics, you're going to upset someone or many someone. For me, I think a lot of the motivation behind my anger towards these remakes is for nostalgia's sake. Nostalgia is a very powerful feeling that, for me, made these remakes really disappointing. These are the movies of my childhood. These are the movies that taught me happily ever afters and taught me the magic of a Disney movie. For nostalgia's sake, don't mess with that. Leave it alone. I think that's a big problem that people have is one, the nostalgia for these original classics can cloud your judgment and does make you very resistant towards any kind of remake or touching these classics, these masterpieces in any way, shape or form. And I think for me, it's that nostalgia of keep them as they are. Don't mess with them. The other problem that I have with the remakes is actually touched upon in a really amazing video that you guys go check out. I will link it in the description below so you guys can watch it too. But it basically talks about the problem with Disney and specifically Disney remakes. The medium or the format of storytelling does contribute to the effectiveness of that storytelling. The video that I have linked in the description below talks a lot about why the original Lion King is so good and the remake is not. And it has to do with the medium or the format of it. The Lion King, the original, works really well because you can animate a lion's face to be almost more human, to have that full range of emotions that you can really only get in animated film. With the Lion King remake being so realistic and having realistic CGI, you lost all of that highly animated emotion and so that storytelling part was lost. I don't want to get too much into it because again that video just goes way into why certain mediums work better than others and so on and so forth but i think it touches upon a lot of the reasons why i specifically got angry with the remakes the second reason why i'm not as much of a hardcore disney fan can kind of relate to the first point about remakes and how kind of upsetting they are but with all these remakes all you're doing is telling the story over again and that's 
okay, but if you want to do that, just watch the movie again. <laughs> the problem I have is there's this severe lack of new material and creativity. And kids really do deserve creativity and originality and so much more than what Disney is currently offering, at least for like mainstream in theaters sort of stuff. There's been this severe lack of creativity and new stories being brought out by Disney. I know an original Disney movie is coming out that's not a sequel and it's not a remake called Onward, but something that was pointed out to me by the internet was that there's this interesting thing about the movie title. If you look at the movie title for Onward, and then you look at the movie title for Frozen, and then you compare them, they look pretty much the same. I think it's sort of telling and sort of sad that we as an audience have reached the point where whatever Disney does, we have to find fault with it and we have to crap all over it for these various things. But the fact that we are now looking out for Disney's now lack of creativity is really sad and really telling of the direction that Disney is taking. Which brings me to the third reason why I am no longer such a big Disney fan. When I think of Walt Disney and what his thoughts would be about the current direction of his company named after him, I can't help but feel like he would be very disappointed and he would accuse Disney now of being very greedy. This to me is probably one of the biggest reasons why I no longer consider myself such a hardcore Disney fan because to me Disney has turned into kind of this mogul of greed. Everything is money run. From a business standpoint, I think they do a really good job of being a business. And I don't want to fault them for that because I do understand. Like, you want to make money, you want your business to succeed. But to me, it seems like they're doing it not out of the original intent of Walt Disney, of Disney itself. The original purpose of Disney was to inspire children and to inspire adults as well. So many adults love Disney films. And to me, it just seems like the main motivation for Disney now is money. If you look at any of the sequels that have come out recently, there are sequels to movies that have been very successful. And when you have the demand of your customers, yeah, it makes sense to make a sequel. But when you get sequels like Frozen 2 that just kind of fall so below the mark or the standard that the first movie sets up, to me it just speaks of laziness. It tells of this laziness that these producers and directors or whoever else, the creative team, to me, it just seems very lazy and like they just threw all these ideas together really quick, tried to get a movie out of it to make money. Frozen is their money maker. So by making a sequel, they can make even more money. Frozen went back into theaters for a sing-along version. Frozen makes money. So by getting a sequel out there, you bet your booty they're gonna make even more money. And I think it is one of the highest grossing films. Frozen 2 is one of the highest grossing films. So yeah, a big motivation for making Frozen 2 is of course the money. But for me, another aspect of the greediness of Disney is the acquisition of all these other companies. Disney owns everything. They own ABC, they own ESPN, they own Hulu, they own, they own so much. They're literally one of the major companies that owns literally everything else. When they bought Lucasfilms, that caused a big ruckus. Disney is acquiring so many businesses. And again, I understand from a business standpoint, it is a good move. 
you do want to make more money but to me that causes Disney and the original intent to be lost and that brings me to my fourth and final point the magic is gone when I was younger one of the big appeals of Disney was the magic Disney magic they've kind of made a brand based on that idea and to me that's gone now the fact that the magic is gone for me could simply stem from the fact that I'm older I'm older, I'm more cynical. Happily Ever After does seem like this fantasy type of thing. It's super out there. I could just be jaded. There's so many different factors that could be contributing to the fact that I don't find at least current Disney movies to have the same sort of magic. To me, the last Disney film that really had that classic Disney magic was Tangled. And it could be because I'm a huge Flynn Rider fan and I'm a huge Rapunzel fan. I could totally be biased because of that. But again, that magic could simply be gone because I'm older. Or, I recently rewatched Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is a fairly old film. I believe Walt Disney was still around and working on it. And the entire time I was watching this movie, I couldn't help but marvel at the simplicity of it. And for me, how simple it was, was hugely appealing. It was one of the reasons that I really enjoyed the movie. There wasn't this major lesson to be learned. There wasn't, you know, two hours plus of footage. It was real quick, it was real short. You went in, here's your brief backstory for the princess, here's the brief backstory for your prince. Princess is in danger, prince goes saves princess, defeats an evil dragon, and the end. You know, happily ever after the end. And that sort of simplicity, I think, nowadays, is a bit lost and I understand why we want to show off our awesome CGI technology and I, I get that but it's also like we're so caught up in that that we forget a simple story can pack a huge punch. I'm not against stories being full of lessons. I think something can be learned. I think that's a good thing you know to have these lessons but they're so simple. You know be good, be kind. I know that a lot of modern movements can kind of seem counter to that simplicity, but it is so easy to switch some of the tropes, switch out these stereotypes, flip some things, and still keep a story simple while having a message and without having an hour-long battle that ends the way you expect it to. Or maybe you don't expect it to. I mean, there are some twists and turns in there. But to me, some of the magic gets lost when everything is so complicated. And maybe that's all that I'm searching for, is I'm starting to search for things, stories and films and life events that are very simple. And maybe that's just where all of this is coming from. Maybe. For me, I feel like everything is so complicated now that I want to go back to that simplistic Disney magic. It is sad to no longer be able to brag that you're this hardcore Disney fan, and it is sad to admit that you've lost that interest in Disney, but I also think that so many people agree with me if I'm if I can take the internet's word for anything. So many people are agreeing with me. There's something off with Disney. And my only hope is that maybe we can go back to the simple idea of the fact that it all started with a mouse. Maybe we should just get back to that thought and make Disney magic magical again. I think Disney does need to listen to its audience and not just the fact that these little kids are gonna go watch it because of course they're gonna watch it. It's Disney. Disney has brainwashed us into going, oh, it's a Disney movie, our kids need to go see it. They're gonna make money no matter what. But I think Disney should start listening to some of the parents, some of the teenagers, 
and any other member of their audience that is sort of frustrated with the directions that they're taking. That's my hope. My hope is that Disney goes back to the fact that all of this did start from a mouse. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye! I need a really clever ending. The only one that popped in my head was Akuna Matata. What a wonderful phrase. Akuna Matata. Ain't no passing grace. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem free philosophy. Akuna Matata. I don't know if that'll go in, but there you go. I sang for you. Mm-hmm.